my family too. Let me show everyone that I am just like you. I want to be more and more like Jesus. I want to be more and more like Him. I want to be more and more like Jesus. I want to be more and more like Him. Please join me in the call to worship. Friends, let us worship God today, for God is great. God has blessed us with life, with faith, with community. Let us worship God today, for God is good. God forgives us and encourages us and loves us. Let us worship God today, because we are God's people. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us such a wonderful day to worship and learn through Vacation Bible School today. Remind us how much you love us and teach us through Bible stories, through caring teachers and lessons, and through your son Jesus, who showed us how to love one another. Amen. Hear now the words of the scripture reading from 1 Daniel, verses 1 through 21. In the third year of the reign of King Jehoiakim of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord let King Jehoiakim of Judah fall into his power, as well as some of the vessels of the house of God. These he brought to the land of the Shinar, and placed the vessels in the treasury of his gods. Then the king commanded his palace master, Ashpenaz, to bring some of the Israelites of the royal family and of the nobility, young men without physical defect and handsome, first in every branch of wisdom, endowed with knowledge and insight, and competent to serve in the king's palace. They were to be taught the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the royal rations of food and wine. They were to be educated for three years, so that they, at the end of that time they could be stationed in the king's court. Among them were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah from the tribe of Judah. The palace master gave them other names. Daniel he called Belshazzar. Hananiah he called Shadrach. Mishael he called Meshach and Azariah he called Abednego. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the royal rations of food and wine, so he asked the palace master to allow him not to defile himself. Now God allowed Daniel to receive favor and compassion from the palace master. The palace master said to Daniel, I am afraid of the king. He has appointed your food and your drink. If he should see you in poorer condition than the other young men of your own age, you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel asked the guard whom the palace master had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishaiah, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days. Let us be giving vegetables to eat and water to drink. If you can then compare our appearance with the appearances of the young men who eat the royal rations and deal with them according to your servants, according to what you have to, and then deal with them Deal with your servants according to what you'd observe. Sorry. So he agreed to this pro proposal and tested them for 10 days. At the end of 10 days, it was observed that they appeared better and fatter than all the young men who had been eating the royal rations. 
So the guard continued to withdraw their royal rations and the wine that they were to drink, and he gave them instead vegetables and water. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and skill in every aspect of literature and wisdom. Daniel also had insight into all visions and dreams. At the end of the time that the king had set for them to be brought in, the palace master brought them into the presence of Nebuchadnezzar, and the king spoke to them. And among them all, no one was found to compare with Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they were stationed in the king's court. In every matter of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel continued there until the first year of King Cyrus. <clears throat> the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, as I start my sermon, please note that for our in-person worship here at West Los Angeles United Methodist Church, the children and adult congregation during the vacation Bible school portion of the worship will have heard some of the background to our scripture reading and seen a dramatized telling of our passage today. So for all of you online, let me share this important background information. You see, a long time ago after the reign of King Solomon, a very bad king followed him. Actually, it was his son. And so the one kingdom eventually split into two kingdoms, and 
very, very terrible kings ruled over these divided kingdoms in time that left both kingdoms more susceptible to conquest by other empires. The Northern king Kingdom was known as Israel, and the Southern Kingdom was known as Judah. The Kingdom of Judah, however, would in time be conquered by the Chaldeans, who represented the new Babylonian Empire. The book of Daniel, chapter 1 in the Bible, begins the story about a small group of men from the southern Hebrew kingdom of Judah. Because the new Babylonian Empire had conquered the kingdom of Judah, the Babylonians captured and forced many of these people from the southern kingdom of Judah to move to other places in the Babylonian Empire. The Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, in fact, took about 10,000 Jews to his capital in Babylon. These were professionals, the wealthy and the tradespeople who could be educated and trained for many years to eventually work in the royal courts to benefit King Nebuchadnezzar and his Babylonian empire. These persons were some of the best and the smartest from the kingdom of Judah. This forced relocation of these persons by King Nebuchadnezzar was the beginning of what was called the exile. Among these best and brightest from the kingdom of Judah was our four men in our Bible story today. Their names were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So I hope that this bit of background information is helpful to you. So let us begin. If you remember, last week I mentioned that the story about Elijah and the widow from the first book of Kings may have been an unfamiliar story to many, well, perhaps this Sunday's Vacation Bible School scripture from the first chapter of Daniel may be equally unfamiliar to many of you as well. So I must say that I really appreciate getting an opportunity to preach on these fascinating passages because they don't come up very often in the lectionary assignments. Usually when I see any children's vacation Bible school curriculum from the many Christian publishing houses, you usually see the more familiar passages like Genesis 1, the creation story, or stories about Moses and Jesus and the disciples, or certainly see the parable of the Good Samaritan used very often. Don't get me wrong, these are all great scriptures that help the children learn some important theological affirmations about God and Jesus Christ and how God wants us to live in the world. But this Cokesbury food truck party theme has been so exciting for me because it gives me the opportunity to preach on passages that I have not preached on before and challenges me to really consider and discover the layers of meaning from these less familiar passages that also give great insight into our faith as well. So today's passage, comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 1. And maybe many of you have heard about Daniel before. Perhaps your recollection of the biblical Daniel has to do with the story about Daniel being thrown into a lion's den to be devoured by the lions. But rather than being killed, Daniel is protected by God. It is a witness to the power and the protection of God, right? That happens in chapter 6 of the book of Daniel. Or maybe you've heard the names Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before. And you may recall that these three men were thrown into a fiery furnace to be incinerated to death for refusing to bow down to an image of King Nebuchadnezzar II. And even though they were thrown into that fire, fiery furnace, they could be seen unscathed by the fire and simply walking around in the furnace without being consumed. That incident happens in chapter 3. Again, a powerful story, again, about the protection of God and the faith of these three and all four of them. In all of these incidences, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel refused to compromise their faith and their integrity as they held fast to their devotion to God. And in all of these stories, these four individuals become powerful testimonies for others to see. Others who become dumbfounded by the power and protection of God over these persons of remarkable faith that they see. 
This story that we examine today is no different, and yet in keeping with our VBS food truck party theme, it has the element of food. <laughs> yes, food again. Now, friends, let me first state that the obvious, <laughs> that this scripture might totally seem like the perfect biblical reference for a healthy choice commercial from a medical health care system, right? Just feed us veggies and water and see how much better physical, emotional, and spiritual wellness we will attain. Is what Daniel says to King Nebuchadnezzar's palace master, uh, Ashpenaz. Friends, to all of you who adhere to and promote a vegetarian or vegan diet, who golly, you could say the promotion of that dietary lifestyle is literally right there in this scripture passage. There it is. It's biblical, undeniably. And certainly very few would argue with you on the wisdom of that choice. Our daughter and son-in-law are vegan. They have been for many years now, and I must say, say they are indeed very healthy and very good promoters of good health. Vicky and I admire them very much for upholding that kind of dietary conviction. And we, have, we too have made better progress on our diet because of their example and advocacy. We do think that they made better choices for their personal wellness than I have throughout the course of my life, who relies heavily now uh, in these elder years on a slew of medications and supplements to maintain my health, blood pressure meds, triglyceride meds, blood sugar meds, fish oil capsules and magnesium supplements, insulin, and so much more. Many of us carry what feels like a whole pharmacy department in our pockets and purses, don't we? I think a lot of the younger generation today are a lot more health conscious than my generation or generations before me. Being a carnivore on a steady diet of a lot of red meat, burgers, burritos, pasta, desserts, and junk food, <laughs> it's hard and challenging to undo old habits, isn't it? So this passage from the standpoint of what Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are eating for 10 days is quite a challenging prescription for a vegetarian diet and the health benefits of simply drinking water. Just considering this advocacy alone is one valuable layer of insight from this passage, don't you think? But friends, this passage is clearly about so much more for Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I think it's kind of funny that Daniel refuses the king's food and wine for all of them. <laughs> we don't see that Daniel consulted Shag Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego on whether they were in on going vegetarian or not. Daniel starts off by talking about his personal refusal to eat the king's food, but then kind of volunteers them all for the vegetarian option by saying, let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. <laughs> See that? But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they don't air any disagreement with Daniel's request. So they must have been okay with it because of the principle and the position that Daniel was taking. That he did not want others to think that their well-being was the result of the power and consideration of King Nebuchadnezzar, but rather that their wellness was the product of the grace and consideration of God. It was all about asserting that it would be because of God that their lives were sustained, so that their lives would be a witness to God's grace. This conviction of all four of them carries through the book of Daniel. As I said, when Daniel is thrown into the lion's den, he was unwavering, had his unwavering faith in God. And when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are thrown into a blazing furnace to be burned alive, 
they remain unscathed by the fires that would have unquestionably incinerated them to ashes because of their abiding faith. Our story today and all of these stories in the book of Daniel challenge us to consider in the intense confrontation of adversity, hardship, and crises, where do we stand? Do we cave into the ways of the world, the powers that be? Do we easily abandon our faith and integrity and conviction when the world entices us with the convenient, the easy, or pressures us to relent to something and some, someone who ultimately does not have our real well-being in mind? Indeed, though the king's food seemed like a generous offer of provision, the king would just as easily throw them into a den of lions and a fiery furnace when his captives did not bow down to his authority and self-aggrandizing will. In the end, whatever our end may be, what will be the story of our life be? With regards to how we lived it, who we believed we were accountable to for the choices of our lives and the pressures of the world that we are faced with. These four, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, also known by their given Babylonian Chaldean names, Belteshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are witness to the strength of faith that we too are called to and challenged by. No question, keeping faith is not an easy thing. We are and will always be challenged by our experiences and circumstances of life. But by God's grace, we can be refined by the fires and the lions into which we are thrown and come out the other side stronger and in character, in wisdom, and in faith than we were before. As we contemplate these witnesses to a deep and abiding faith found in Scripture, may our God who loves us give us strength and hope for the journey, our journey, and may we each also be a testimony to the power and the watchful care of God for others to see. Grace and peace to you. Amen. Let us pray together. God of unending mercy and grace, life is such that we often encounter some very difficult and troubling circumstances and situations where our faith is challenged and tested. So often what we are facing can draw us away from our commitment to be wholly reliant upon your goodness. So often we are tempted to abandon our faith for the conveniences and the pressures of life. Biblical testimony reminds us how troubling life has been and can be for even the most admirable and exemplary of character and faith. We acknowledge that we need you to provide us with the perseverance of strength and hope to maneuver through all of life's complexities. Forgive us, please, O oh God, when we fail, but help us help set upon us upon the road to wellness and wholeness that ultimately comes when our lives are truly held in your grace. For all that we individually and collectively face as a community, nation, and world, help us to see one another in the world as you do, with compassion and hope. Help us to change the things that we can about, our, about ourselves and the world around us that we in your world might be a more shining expression and example of your goodness. This we pray in the Christ whom you sent to show us the way. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer that Christ taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant, make me a servant. Make me a servant today. Make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant, make me a servant, make me a servant today. Friends, hear now these words of benediction. O oh God, you show us what and how to be in the world through your prophets, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. And you teach us through Jesus when asked by one of the teachers of the law, which of the commandments is the greatest? And he said, the most important is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And Jesus added, and the second is, to love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. In these, the direction of God is clear, clearly and plainly stated. So friends, let us go forth from this sanctuary to worship God in these very ways out in the world, loving God and loving others with justice, mercy, and kindness, and with great humility. Amen. Yeah.